Hey guys, Rob Adams here for Shutter Mag, and today we're talking about my full Final Cut Pro 10 workflow. And Final Cut Pro is a pretty powerful program if you just get your brain bent around a different form of editing. And uh, it's not that far off from other editing platforms, but here's a nice, quick, easy workflow that will help you to get editing in Final Cut and do really fast edits. So I've got some clips here of Vanessa when she was working with the Canon EOS R5 on location when we first got the camera, and we've got a series of clips of her um, filming with it. We've got clips of her um, talking about it, and we have a studio shot of her actually going over all the specs of the video. And I've gone ahead and imported them using the command I dialogue and then you can just go ahead and grab whatever clips you want bring them in and once they're in here you might see something like this here where it says rob gh5 and canon eos r that's basically the real names so final cuts built on a database so it loves metadata and it uses keyword tags and metadata to organize all your footage and it's sorting right now by real so if i were to highlight these clips and then come over here to my information tab and go to extended You'll see it says real and then the name of the real, Rob GH5. And there it says Rob GH5. And same thing for here. You could always change what this is. Like I could just change this, this to say EOS R and it'll change the metadata and sort it accordingly. There's a bunch of different ways to sort and view your footage. You can sort by real, date imported, content created, so on and so forth. So it really is a powerful organizational program and it's really built on that database structure. So. Here I'm just looking at all of my clips, but I can go ahead and organize this further by using what are called keyword collections. Keyword collections is basically allow you to sign keywords to clips or ranges of clips and then store them in a nice list view. So here are some shots of Vanessa working with reflectors. So I'm just gonna highlight all of those. And if I hit my command K tab and type in uh, reflectors, and I know the clips are already named, they're already named, you see the file names there because they were named outside of the program and then brought in, but you could rename clips at any time too. But if I just create a keyword collection called reflectors and hit enter, look over here on the left-hand side in the media browser, you see a little key icon and the word reflectors. And if I click on that, it shows me only the clips that I've put into that keyword collection. Again, database keyword tagging, pretty powerful stuff. If I just go ahead and here's some, you know, find some other shots. Here's Vanessa talking about the R5. She's talking about it in this one too. If I just uh, hit Command K and type in uh, talking about R5, it'll create another keyword collection here and there's that clip. If I wanna go ahead and add a clip to a keyword collection like this one, which belongs with her talking about the R5, I don't have to type it in again. I could just click and drag it over to the keyword collection I want it in and there it is, pretty powerful. So let's go ahead and just organize the rest of this stuff. So we've got some shots of her filming. So we'll just call this filming. And let's see, I can sort by which clips have not been rated. So it looks like we missed one here. And I'll go ahead and name that, uh, eh, we'll just call that, we'll put that into the filming category, and there it is. So here's all our, our shots of Vanessa filming with the R5. Here's the shot of shots of her talking about reflectors, and then her, of course, talking about the R5. Finally, I've got another clip down here, which is a studio talking head when she's running through all the specs, and we'll just go ahead and keyword tag that talking head. And there it is. So here's all of our keyword tags. Very, very cool. I find that editing is much faster if I don't have to go searching through all my footage to find the best shots. If I've already got the best shots keyword tagged and then what I'm about to show you favorited, um, it speeds up the process and allows you to be more creative or just be more involved in the edit. So favoriting. Let's go ahead and find some ranges of these clips and I'm just gonna zoom in here and just find some shots of Vanessa working with the reflectors. So let's see, maybe. Uh, so here's a shot of her setting up a reflector. If I just press in and then out, I and O on the keyboard, you see it selects a range there denoted by that yellow box. And which you can, by the way, you can just drag and change this range or you can just completely click and drag over the range you want. If you hit F, it puts a green bar above the clip, and now that clip is favorited, meaning I'm telling Final Cut, hey, this is the range of this big clip that I really want to use. So let's go ahead and find a few more of those shots. Here's her setting up a reflector. These are just rough. Press F to favorite it. Let's find another shot here. Here's a shot for setting up. Different types, and then F. And then maybe one more shot of her. Here, here's a wide shot. Good, hit F. And now if I come up here where it says all clips and I sort by favorites, 
it's only going to show me those ranges that I've selected. So this makes editing and culling down your footage so much easier. And then when you're editing, you can only look at the stuff that's usable. You don't have to look at all of those clips, all of those you know massive clips that you may have. So we'll just go down the line here and go through all of these and, and just grab some clips. So drag a range, hit F. Drag a range here, hit F. Here's another shot, and then maybe one more. Let's see. Yeah, all right, very similar, but whatever. Okay, and again, if I sort by favorites, there's all my favorite clips. So as I click through each of these, it's only gonna show me my favorites. So you're noticing a pattern here. Final Cut is really all about pre-planning and getting your footage organized so you're in a position to edit faster, okay? So let's talk about dialogue and this leads us into the next part which uh you know where we get into editing on the timeline i'm just going to grab some dialogue of vanessa talking and i'll show you how it's quickly edited so let's just go ahead into the beginning where she starts speaking i'm wedding and portrait photographer vanessa joy and by now you probably have heard this morning the wonderful announcement of the canon eos r5 so there you see i've just gone ahead and dragged a range and i'm going to go ahead and create a new project timeline by pressing down here and let's call this r5 video and hit ok and that's going to open up the project timeline and you see down here on the bottom there is a, a gray bar that runs the horizontal length of the timeline that's called the magnetic primary storyline and this was the thing that threw people off when final cut first debuted in 2013 because it is just that it's magnetic so watch what happens if i just press keyword e and drag it down here it is now living in the center timeline you'll notice there's no other tracks that you would see in a traditional nle so if I just go ahead and try to move this, watch what happens, it snaps back. Anything put on this primary storyline, this gray, dark gray bar, is gonna snap magnetically to whatever's in front of it, okay? So if I just go ahead and grab another clip here. Now what I wanna do with this video, yes, I'm gonna give you the specs, I'm gonna give you that thing, but I also want to talk about the R5 in relation to the R6 and the 1DX3. Okay, fine. Well, let's just go ahead and add that down here and you'll see that my two clips are now together. Of the Canon EOS R5. Now what I want to do- I'm not gonna just extend those clips out. All right, now watch what happens R again. If I go ahead and try to move this clip, it's gonna snap back. If I want to rearrange them, all I have to do is drag and they will rearrange for me, all right? So that's pretty cool. It just takes a little bit of getting used to when you're editing. So now let's say we wanted to throw some other clips down here and do some B-rolling. Let's go ahead and look at our clips by favorites. And let's just find some clips of Vanessa filming with the R5. And we'll just go ahead and drag that down here. We don't need the audio, so we can just turn that down. Vanessa Joy, and by now you probably have heard this morning the wonderful announcement of the Canon EOS R5. Now what I want to do with this video... So yes, here's I mean, one shot, and I could just trim that up. Here's another shot. I'll just grab that and drag it down. Don't need the sound. And now these shots are cut together. Oh, yes, I'm going to give you the specs. I'm gonna give okay, you it's a little that. bit of a rough cut, but you kind of get the idea. Now watch this. This is the cool thing about the primary storyline. Let's say I wanted to move this scene. So let's say this one part that she's talking about right here, and I don't want it here. I want to move it somewhere else in the film, but I don't want to have to re-edit it once I move it. I don't have to copy and paste all these clips. All I have to do is grab the primary storyline, lift, and then drag it to where I want it, and it's going to move everything that's connected to it with it. And you'll see here, you know what clips are connected by this little tiny blue lines right here, and these are the connectors that tell you where these clips are connected, right? So this allows you to move around scenes in Final Cut Pro 10 very easily and organize and rearrange your footage however you see fit. So let's say once you're done with your editing, now you want to move on to the next phase, which is getting your audio sounding good. If I play this back, you see that the VU meter over here on the right-hand side and the, the levels are running at like negative 20. It's a little bit low. We want it to run a little higher, more like negative 12 to negative 6. We could easily raise the volume. Really have heard this That's one morning. way to do it, but I like a different way of doing it. If you go over here by selecting the clip and going into your audio inspector and clicking loudness and uniformity, that will apply sort of a uh, a limiter or a normalizer to it where the footage levels will now be, or the audio levels will be nice and even. So now let's listen. <laughs> Vanessa Joy, and by now you probably have heard this morning the wonderful Make a announcement here. of the Canon EOS R. So if you've got nice, cleanly recorded sound, that's a quick and easy way to get your levels uniform and even across, and uh, sounding nice and crisp and clear. Once you've got that done, we can go ahead and uh, Command C and copy paste, and then Option Command V to copy that over to the next clip. 
R5. Now, what I want to do with and this And there video, you go. You can also do easy fade in and fade out just by dragging this little doohickey over here. F5. Now, what I want to... And to blend your footage or to blend your audio just a little bit more. See if I can grab that little bugger. There we go. R5. Now, what I want to do... So, there's a lot more you can do with audio. There's a whole slew of plugins from Apple Logic that'll allow you to do all kinds of uh, mixing and there's uh, equalization obviously there's so much you can do but on the on the very surface level of audio and Final Cut that's a great tool to know when you're doing some basic audio correction or audio manipulation now the final thing in the workflow would be color grading. So I'm going to go ahead and start over here on Vanessa's talking head. And she looks a little bit warm here. I want to cool this down. So I'm just going to go into my color tools. And here, by default, I've got my color curves. And I can just bring down the temperature and maybe remove some of that red that's in there. Okay. Another way to do that, I'm just going to undo that. Another way to do it would be to use Final Cut's built-in color balance tool. So if I come over here and click balance color, it's going to do that for me. And then I can even still make some further adjustments from there. So let's go ahead and just bring up the exposure just a touch and the highlights. And you've got some handy color and uh, video scopes here to help you dial in your grade however you want. Her hair is looking a little bit on the red side there. So you've got hue saturation curves and I can go ahead and select that color and pull some of that redness out. And that's a little bit more true to her natural color. So there's a lot you can do. Final Cut is really not a color grading program per se. If you're going to do some heavy color grading, it's a good idea to get into DaVinci Resolve and you can use XML uh, data out of Final Cut to get into DaVinci Resolve from here. So there, that was a basic color grade and you can go ahead okay. and just copy and paste and apply all that to another clip. And then you'll see the before and after. Here I'll show you real quick. Before and after, before and after. So pretty powerful stuff, very simple. Uh, the higher the bitrate of your footage, obviously, the easier it's going to be to color grade and the more it's going to hold up under grading. So I hope that helps you out. It gives you a basic workflow for Final Cut Pro 10. And, uh, of course, if you wanted to do some titles, that's easy to do. There's all kinds of title packs. Let me just lower the volume here. All kinds of title packs that are pre-animated and you can change all these. I mean, there's there's so much you can do. Uh, you can create your own titles in Final Cut. There's just a lot you can do. And it's a great program. You just got to get your head around that primary storyline because that tends to trip people up. So I hope this helped you out. I'm Rob Adams for Shutter Mag. See you next time.